Ng into the corner, plays the puck up the boards. Brown pinches in at the right point, is checked by Hannon. The puck goes high in the air, comes down as Hannon goes down. And a Gino Cavallini check, and then Francis Getty comes back and decks Cavallini. Here's Hannon at center ice to Clark over the St. Louis line, and it is offside Toronto. And Paul Cavallini and Luke Francis Getty get in a scrap right in front of Curtis Joseph, and Francis Getty wrestles Paul Cavallini to the ice. Paul Cavallini was checked. I may have said Gino earlier, who was Paul Cavallini, who threw a big check, and then Francis Getty came across the ice and drilled him, and we've got a lot of action in the first 28 seconds. Well, I, I believe it was, it was Gino. It was Gino. I'm sorry. It all began back in the Leaf zone when Dave Hannon was really run over. That could have been called charging, my friends as Gino took about two steps, and then Francis Getty came in and leveled Gino Cavallini. The players skated down the ice, and after the Leafs went offside, that's when they became involved again. But Gino, a native of Toronto, sends it right in front of the net, and the Leafs intercept, and then Clark, a poor pass, broken up in the neutral zone. Blues, Hall over the line, cutting in the left wing, a shot, he scores! Brad Hall on a broken play, the Leafs sloppy, coming out of their own zone. Hall has not been roses and babies breath with this Leafs team for a few years, and there's a lot of turmoil here and a lot of pressure on this hockey team, and especially on coach Doug Carpenter. The Toronto media has a very sharp spotlight on this franchise at all times, and when things are not going well, there's a lot of criticism. That's an understatement. Five minutes into the first period, the Blues lead 1-0. Good for checking. Puck now at the Toronto blue line. Poked away by Ronnie. Great stick handling. He takes a shot. Weaving back to the blue line. Ronnie now into the slot. A slap shot. He scores! Sutter ahead to Oates. Into the corner to Courtnall to the side of the net in front. A shot saved by Ng. And then Courtnall runs right into the post. And that's what Courtnall did there. He went to the net, but really got in too close. And Courtnall nearly injured himself. Paul Cavallini with a puck near the red line. Ahead to Gino Cavallini. He's stopped by Beach. Loose puck behind the Toronto net. It's centered off the arm. And in front it comes in the blue score. Brindamore. And Dave Reed for Toronto to John McIntyre moving it all. On his backhand. Knocked down. Can't get a shot. But there'll be a penalty. Now a shot and they score. Toronto and a shot by Dave Reed from the corner. Scores. An impossible angle. Well, a fluky goal during that delayed penalty. Reed fired it toward the net. Wendell Clark missed most of last year, or at least part of last year, with a knee injury and a back injury. Clark has had all kinds of ailments over the last three or four years. As a matter of fact, in the last three years, he's only played in 81 games. He was the lead first overall pick in 1985, but Ken, because of all those injuries, he's only been a shadow of what he could be in the last couple of years. He was a great player. Oh, they thought that he was going to be a franchise player here. He just hasn't turned out to be because of the injuries. Off of Hull skate at center ice to Gino Cavallini. Into the Toronto end. Drops it for Hull. He shoots. He scores! Brad Hall, his second of the night. That one went off Brad Marsh and changed directions. King didn't have much of a chance and Brad Hall has scored twice. And the Blues take the lead four to one. Played back in by the Blues offside as the Meso gets the puck. Blues up 4-1 here in Toronto. And now Ramage gets involved with Dave Lowry at center ice. Three on two. Drop pass to Sutter right in a shot. And a save by Ng. Now they center one. Featherstone right in front of save by Ng on Featherstone. Here's Oates in the corner. Great pass to Courtney right in a shot. He scores! Oates, after a chance by Marwa, gets it to Featherstone. You won't come any closer to your first NHL goal than there. But the Blues do not let up. Four checking. Four checking. Rich Sutter four check on the play Richardson and that was the key to allow the puck to get out into the slot to Jeff Courtnall. Now we have a fight at center off the face off. Kevin McGuire and not Basson. McGuire got Basson down but no punches landed. 
McGuire played in Buffalo and Philadelphia last year, was originally signed by the Leafs as a free agent out of Tier 2 hockey a couple of years ago. And McGuire is known as a very tough customer. To center for Domfu. Now to Aya Frady. Into the Blues end. Right wing for Domfu. Back to Thibodeau. Penalty called here against the Blues. A delayed call. And now in front, Merwa and Aya Frady get involved. And Aya Frady is very hot. I believe he wants Rick Sutter. There was an original call against the Blues. I believe, John, the penalty was against Sutter, and the way I of Frady is trying to get at Sutter, you can bet Rich Sutter did something to Al I of Frady that he will not soon forget. Oh, is I of Frady hot, and Sutter is where he ought to be. Quickly into the penalty box and out of the reach of Al I of Frady. Boy, is he hot. He could get kicked out. He really manhandled one of the linesmen. He could get a misconduct or a game misconduct. Here was that play again. On the play, I afraid he made a pass, and he was about three strides after the pass, and in a sense almost got blindsided by Rich Sutter, and that was the play, and Sutter will get penalized for it. Al Iafrady gets a 10-minute misconduct along with two minutes for roughing. After Rich Sutter picks up a two-minute tripping penalty, Boy, Al Iafrady almost got blindsided, got checked, really on a play that could also have been interference. And, of course, he's coming back from that serious knee injury, and you know that has to weigh the condition of his knee heavily on his mind, and Iafrady and Sutter talking about it now. Al Iafrady has been serving a 10-minute misconduct, and this young defenseman, and he is still young, only 24 years of age, even though he's in his seventh season, at the, now a fight breaks out. Ramage and Lowry. And it is short-lived. They had been after each other earlier. Aya Frady has been standing in the penalty box the entire time he's been in there. Sort of coaching, sort of cheerleading, and probably more than anything wishing he were out on the ice. But he will not take a seat. He's just very much involved in the action. And it's time right now to head for the mountains and round up a round of that refreshingly smooth, ice-cold bush beer. But don't be gone long. A lot more action. A cold bush. Boy, that would taste good right now. Lowry gets a roughing minor at 15-24. And Ramage gets a double minor for roughing. So the Blues will get a power play, their second of the night. That's the second time Ramage has gone after a Blues player. Gino Cavallini in after it on left wing. Gets the puck on the board. Now it squirts free. Goes right to Ronning back on the left point. Right point to Paul Cavallini. Let's one fly. He scores! And the Leafs skate back after it. Luke Richardson in behind his goal. Left it there. Brindamore in there. Four checking. Centers to Gino Cavallini right in front of shot. And Ng made a glove save. Now Brindamore gets it. He was slashed by Aya Freddy. Brindamore cuts into the slot. Back to Marois. Shot. And Lowry tipped it wide. Delayed penalty called here on the Leafs. I believe Aya Freddy, who looked like a baseball player taking a swing at Brindamore. And he'll go off. And Ken, that's the kind of infraction that in my mind could warrant a five-minute major. That's how hard he hit him. There's no question about it. It's the kind of thing they are trying to see less of in the National Hockey League. The Blues just everywhere. I mean everywhere around the Toronto goal. Ng must be very grateful to get out of this game. Earlier, Wendell Clark and Rich Sutter got involved. Behind that play, Lou Franceschetti was slashing at a couple of Blues players. So. The Leafs could get very physical here in this third period, down 6-1. In the corner to Dave Reed. He's checked by Jeff Brown, and the puck comes loose to Herb Ragland. He's smothered to the boards by McGuire, and at center ice, Beach gets the puck. Now McIntyre and Ronnie want to go at it at center ice, and McIntyre seems to fall down, and Ronnie ends up on top of him. Cliff Ronnie gets involved in a fight here at Maple Leaf Gardens in Toronto. And that will not happen all that often anywhere. 
Now we know it's a strange night. Buck kept in by Barahowski. Over to Dom Foos, moving in front, takes a shot, can't get a shot, then Richardson's drive. Stopped by Joseph. And the Blues have the puck in their own end. The long feed for Hall too far. And the Leafs play it in their own zone. Both teams are changing. Leafs stopped at center ice. Oates gets a breakaway. Oates moves in, fake back in, shot, he scores! 16,009 unhappy fans for the most part. There are Blues fans here. But the majority are Leafs fans, and their team is down 7-1. Blues shoot the puck in. Leafs can't clear. Jeff Brown at the left point drives it into the far corner. Aya Frady controls. He makes a nice move to get away from Momesso. Gives the puck to Hannon at the checkered red line. He'll flip it into the corner. Back for it, Jeff Brown, and there'll be a penalty. A penalty coming up, and it'll be Raglan getting the penalty, and then he and Wendell Clark are going to go. Clark wanted Adam in retaliation, and both dropped their gloves, tangle each other up, and not much comes of it between Herb Raglan and Wendell Clark, and Clark is a tough customer, and so is Raglan, but Clark definitely has a size advantage if the two were to go head-to-head. Brenda Moore lost his stick, or did I afraid you? I afraid he lost his stick, and then he stole Brenda Moore's stick, and that is what you call holding. He pilfered his stick from Brenda Moore. It's what you call clever, but you can't do it. No. How is that McRib uh, better than the Big Mac? I say good. I characterize it this way: it's just the opposite of a Brian Sutter practice. Not tough at all. Oh, here are the Blues. Two-man advantage, he shoots and scores! It's the hat trick for Brett Hall! From the left dot, Brett Hall hits his third, the hat trick, his sixth career hat trick, and the Blues lead it eight to one. Unable to initially, and then Snips intercepts. Gives it away to Lehman, a shot blocked by Snips. Gary Lehman behind the net, to old check in front of backhand shot. Now another shot, and they score, Mark Osborne. Eight two Blues. We're talking about distractions, this crowd reacting to a rather well-endowed young lady sitting near the ice below us. Paying more attention to her than they have been to the game of late. No wonder why the Leafs are losing so badly. <laughs> Puck along the near boards, tied up, and a whistle stops play. Ramage feeds Olchek. He moves in along the right wing board. Back to Aya Frady. He'll let a shot go right on Joseph to save, and Osborne scores on the rebound. The second goal tonight for Mark Osborne. Eight to three is the final tonight here in Toronto as the Blues soundly defeat the Maple Leafs who have won only one game all season.